Whether new shooter, longtime gun owner, or even police officer or soldier, your handgun needs a Crimson Trace laser sight or light. Get the confidence and reliability you need to protect family, home, and country. Crimson Trace. Today on Tom Gresham's Gun Talk, a congressional inquiry into a questionable practice by Veterans Affairs, an environmentally friendly gun cleaner, and more. To be a part of the show, call Tom now at 866-TALK-GUN. Now, here's Tom Gresham. Oh, boy, I am so glad to be able to do this. We had a great time last week at the NRA's annual meetings. Of course, we had a great show there, but it's just more fun, honestly, to do it live where you can call in and we can talk about guns and shooting and getting people involved in guns and doing the kind of training we like to talk about. And I, uh, before we went on the show, I had a, a friend come over and he was showing me a couple of the guns that he recently got. He had a, um, well, let's see, what was he carrying? He had the Ruger LCP. It had uh, actually, I, I talked him into getting the recluse holster. He loves that, and so he was liking that. And then I was showing him the Crimson Trace laser that goes on the LCP. He's going, "Oh man, that's cool." And then he said, "Well, what do you think about lasers?" And this is a guy who's been shooting all his life, Com- you know, competitive shooter, can't parry, all of that. And it was interesting. I said, "Well, here's the deal. When I started out, I didn't like lasers. I didn't want one on. I just thought it was a bad idea. And I have moved so far that I'm at the point now where." I could make the argument that without a laser, your self-defense gun is incomplete. Now, that's a long way to go. We can talk about that as we go forward. Today, we're going to be talking with uh, Senator Chuck Grassley from Iowa. He has identified what the VA has been doing. We've been talking about this. The Veterans Administration marking the files of veterans. If a veteran says he or she, for instance, has trouble uh, with his or her finances, they mark that as mentally incompetent. That goes to the FBI. That person can never buy a firearm again. Bang, 100,000 people already stripped of their gun rights because of what the VA is doing. Uh, Senator Grassley is basically going to Attorney General Eric Holder and say, hey, what's going on? You need to look into this. We're also going to be talking about uh, a a cool new gun and a cool new caliber pistol. And we're going to be talking about gun cleaning. But mostly what we're going to be doing today is we're going to be taking your calls and your comments and your range reports because I know a lot of you have been Warning to call in with range reports, and we'll certainly be taking all of those. What have you been shooting? What kind of ammo are you shooting? What's working? And maybe even what's not working for you? Are you having any issues with any of your shooting? Maybe, it, actually, it's interesting. We often can diagnose shooting errors or challenges right here if we talk about it. It's funny because when I was talking with my buddy before we went on the air, he said, what are you going to talk about today? I said, same thing we're talking about here. He said, what do you mean? I said, we're going to talk about guns. What would you buy? What are you shooting? What ammo are you using in it? Scopes, uh, technique, trigger pull, everything else. Anything that we can talk about, that's what we're going to be talking about. It's going to be a, a lot of fun. Also, of course, there's news out there, a lot of things going on. A lot, of course, comes out of California on the gun rights side, or at least assaults on gun rights. But it's everywhere, and we can talk certainly about that. Uh... And I'm going to throw this out. It's going to make some people nervous. Okay? So just catch your breath before you overreact. Some people are definitely going to overreact on this. I note that it is the 20th anniversary of the bombing in Oklahoma City. A dastardly, cowardly, terroristic attack. And Tim McVeigh, of course, was executed for that as well. He should have been. However, what has the media missed on this. Not justification. Understand, I'm not saying this is justification. So don't misquote me on this. But what have they missed? What precipitated that attack? An attack on gun owners. Two years before. Waco was an assault by the ATF on a group of people who ATF said, you didn't pay a $200 tax, so we're going to knock down your building and kill you and burn up the children. $200 $200 tax. Ruby Ridge was over not paying a $200 tax. They said, you cut a barrel off of a shotgun less than 18 inches. That requires a $200 tax. So we're going to machine gun your 14-year-old son in the back. We're going to kill your wife while she's holding a baby, all because you didn't pay a $200 tax. Tim McVeigh 
was a nut bar, terrorist, crazy man, but he was reacting to the government's assault on gun owners. The government's, let me correct that, the government's murder, or at least killings, murder is a legal term, the government's killings of gun owners based on charges that they didn't pay a $200 tax, so we're going to come in with tanks. We're going to come in with U.S. Marshals. We're going to tell Lon Horiuchi, the FBI sniper, shoot on sight. Anybody who has a gun, kill them. Whether or not they're doing you any harm, whether or not they're pointing a gun at anybody, if they're carrying a gun, we're, our rules of engagement are you shoot to kill. Anybody who has a gun. That's what FBI sniper Lon Horiuchi was told, and that's what he did, and he killed Vicki Weaver while she was carrying. She was armed with an infant baby because he said he was shooting at somebody else. Yeah. Sure, no problem. What could go wrong with those kind of rules of engagement? The assault on the American gun owner by the American government goes on, continues. 866-TALK-GUN gets you in here. Liston is on uh, line three out of Tennessee. Hey, Liston, it was good to see you at the NRA, man. Hey, Tom, likewise. It's always a, a joy to see your face, uh, your big smiling face there, and, and uh, whenever wherever NRA is. Hey, what I'm calling about uh, is um, uh, since the NRA, the Tennessee legislature, actually uh, uh, in a conference committee report uh, agreed on a parks carry bill, and they sent it to Governor Haslam, and I just want to get folks uh, encouraged to uh, to contact the governor so that he can uh, hopefully sign the thing. Uh, a little history here. Uh, in 2009, local governments were uh, when when the parks carry was first passed in the state, uh, local governments were given the ability to opt out. And, and as a result, we have citizens who can carry legally in state parks and national parks, uh, mm-hmm. but not in some local parks. And this bill would would uh, open it up for folks who, to carry, for instance, in Nashville, where we could walk on the bridge over the park, but we couldn't walk through the park. <laughs> Okay, so where where does this sit? It is waiting for the governor's governor signature. Yes, it is. Uh, uh, it's uh, it'll probably go to the governor tomorrow. Uh, they they got it done Thursday, I believe it was, and it has to you know go through the process to get over to his office. But I believe it'll be there tomorrow, early next week, anyway. Okay, I'm I'm going to go ahead and out you here, Liston. Liston is Liston Matthews. He is the Knoxville Gun Rights Examiner. If you just look up Knoxville Gun Rights Examiner, you can read his very good writings on gun rights. You've been doing this for quite some time, and I, actually, I saw your piece on the Parks Carry Bill, ready for the signature. Yeah. So, what do you need right now? Do you need Tennesseans to contact the governor's office? Yes, I do, and we've got a—I've got an email address and a phone number too. Go for it. Okay, the email address is Bill dot Haslam. That's H A S L A M at T N dot gov, and the phone number is area code six one five seven four one. Two zero zero one. Okay, tn. dot gov. Got that. Six one five seven four one two thousand and one. So yeah. you can get a hold of him. Now, now the governor right, was t- a member. Tell me what this thing signed. Yeah, right. The governor was a member of the mayor's before he joined the NRA. So we feel like he's kind of lukewarm. But if he gets enough people contacting him, he, he might he might go ahead and, and sign it. So he was one of uh, Bloomberg's gun banners. Yes, he was. Uh, but now he's a member of the NRA, huh? Well, I know he he did quit Bloomberg's. He told us at a meeting that he quit Bloomberg's and, and joined the NRA. Now, whether he's still an, a member of the NRA, I'm not sure. Uh, but he okay. was at one time anyway. All right. Well, maybe he just figured out where the votes were. So, And, and that's okay as long as he got it figured out. And he pays attention to it and does the right thing. We'll go with that. But at the same time, I'm with you. Once you've been uh, part of the uh, Bloomberg Posse, uh, I don't trust you for quite a long time. So there you go. Hey, Liston, I appreciate you letting us know about that. It's uh, good information. Liston Matthews, check him out. He is the Knoxville Gun Rights Examiner, if you just look for him on the web. Good writer. And uh, obviously, he stays on top of this. All right. Have you been to the range? What's going on? What have you shot? Any cool new guns? Any cool old guns, for that matter? Always like to hear about them. 866-TALK-GUN, 866-TALK-GUN, or shoot me an email, tom at guntalk.com. Be right back. If 
you're looking for a safe and trusted way to sell your firearms, look no further than Dury's Gun Shop. I trusted them to sell my dad's collection. They built their business for over 50 years on honesty and customer service. Dury's Guns will buy any size collection or estate, none too big or too small. Selling your firearms to Dury's Guns is easy. Go with the pros. I trust Dury's Guns. Dury'sGuns.com Are you looking for a place to shoot? The National Shooting Sports Foundation has a great website called wheretoshoot.org. It's the largest database of shooting ranges on the Internet. It's also a great resource for shooters where you can find video tips, printable targets, and a lot more. Find it online at wheretoshoot.org. And while you're there, download their free iPhone app. That's wheretoshoot.org. The Black Hills. There's nothing like it on Earth. The kind of place where characters become legends. Wild Bill Hickok. Crazy Horse. Calamity Jane. Pick any part of the world and you'll find people go there to make it their own. But this is where people come to get made. This is the place that made the people who make the best ammo on earth. Black Hills Ammunition. This is Masada Ayub. If you carry a gun for self-defense, I urge you to join the Armed Citizens Legal Defense Network. The network was formed to help armed citizens fight the legal battle after a self-defense incident. I'm a member and serve on their advisory board, and I advise all lawfully armed citizens to become members, too. Protect yourself. Go to armedcitizensnetwork.org. That's armedcitizensnetwork.org. forget we have a uh, a gun giveaway going on arms corps giving away a very cool gun we'll actually be talking about it a little bit later on in the show but all you have to do is go to guntalk.com slash win to give away a tcm rock ultra fs single stack and 22 tcm slash 9 mm two extra mags and 100 rounds of tcm ammo and just to let you know people actually do win this i just got this email it says hey tom i was just contacted by blank from uh from blank and was informed that i want a taurus millennium G2 9mm pistol in Gun Talks October 2014 giveaway. Yeah, somehow that would slip through the cracks. So we got back, we had to circle back and make sure he got his gun. It says, I was very pleasantly surprised and wanted to personally thank you and the Gun Talk crew. I've been an avid fan of your show for years and can honestly say that I probably heard all the podcasts that you have on the web. That's a lot. Wow. <laughs> the show has informed and entertained me as a constant companion during the hours I spend driving around. Says, in my opinion, you are a great and very effective ambassador for our right to bear and own arms. Uh, and it goes on, uh, JC, I appreciate that out of Sugarland, Texas. Congratulations on winning that gun. People do win these guns. You will have to, uh, all you have to do is go there, enter. It's going to take you about 30 seconds. Go to guntalk.com slash W-I-N slash win, that is. Line two, Rich is out of uh, Coos Bay, Oregon. Rich, you're on Gun Talk. Hey, how's it going? Good. Um, yeah, I didn't agree with what you had to say about Timothy McVeigh in the complete. I do agree with Waco, Texas. I don't think that that was right what happened. And from what my mm-hmm. best understanding is about Timothy McVeigh, he was actually there when that happened. That's what the account so, says on Wikipedia when you read about it. He was so there what? and he was speaking against the, AT, uh, the ATF and what they were doing, and he watched the ATF kill those people. Okay, so what? Uh, so I believe that he was a patriot. I don't believe he was a terrorist. I guess. So you think? Blow, wait, 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 wait! Stop, 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 stop! You think it's okay? It's, it's a patriot's action to blow up a daycare center? I uh, he took out the Oklahoma City building. That wasn't a daycare center. There was a daycare center in that building. He blew up but a daycare he, center he and not, killed he, children. No, no, leave him up. Leave him up. I want him to talk. Uh, excuse me. Go, Rich. Go ahead. He attacked the government back that attacked the, uh, the people. He attacked the tyrannic government. He he was a hero. I, I You're don't see nuts. How he was a terrorist. I can see in the government's eyes how he was a terrorist. 
but he was standing no, he's up a for terrorist. The let, me, let me tell you something. No, no, no. He wasn't standing up for anything. He blew up people who had nothing to do with this. He killed citizens. He killed children. He killed innocent people who had nothing to do with Waco. There are ways to be a patriot and to change things, but you don't do it by blowing up a building full of innocent people. He is no different from the attackers in 9-11. Not one bit of difference. Uh, excuse me, there's not a bit difference between 9-11 and what he did? You got it. You heard me. Okay, well, um, I, I don't know. I have different beliefs than you do about 9-11, apparently. I believe more about the architects and the engineers than the government's official Oh, story. good God. So, so Okay, so it was our government that brought down the buildings in 9-11? We're going that way? Uh, well, uh, what happened to building number seven? Can you explain to me oh, building seven? Oh, good. Gr- hey, hey, Rich, look... Lib- I can't help you, man. <laughs> I thought maybe we could have a conversation, but if you're that far out there, you need to stay way out there. Holy smoke. Okay, I appreciate the call. Thank you. Have a nice day. Have a nice life. Uh, Frank is with us on line three out of New Jersey. Hello, Frank. You're on Gun Talk. How you doing today? I uh, was out on the range yesterday uh, trying the H&K VP9, and uh, it's uh, a nice gun. Um Kicks a little bit more than I thought it would. Um, mm-hmm. The two piece trigger, um, I've heard some issues about that of hurting the finger. I did not have that issue. Um, seems to shoot well uh, at uh, about 21 feet, uh, shooting groups of about uh, two inches. Uh, I'm not a very good shot, but uh, uh, that's what I. <laughs> it sounds like you are. And. Uh, a very nice gun, uh, well priced uh, for an H and K. Um, I think it compares very well with uh, a Sig uh, two two six or um, mm-hmm. uh, uh, CZ P O nine, uh, which which you know, I do. As, as I'm as I'm looking at it, you know what it reminds me of the the style of it looks kind of like a um, a Walther, the Walther Striker fired guns. It's kind of that yeah, same I, look of grip and all. Yeah, it, it does feel like a Walter, the um, uh, PPQ, uh, but uh, uh, little differences. I do mm-hmm. like the new release for the magazine. Uh, that is something that I was surprised at. It, it is not a button release. Mm-hmm. It's a toggle release, and it's located at the top of the uh, trigger. Uh, it, it, it seems to uh, facilitate a, a, a quicker response. Did it, how long did it take you to get used to that mag release to where you could just do it without thinking about it? I'd say um, two, three magazines. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's 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 pretty. Once once you use it once or twice, uh, I, I was doing some practicing at home before going to the range, and uh, it just seems to come second nature. Uh, it's a nice position for it. Uh, I know some guys uh, are saying uh, they prefer the button type, but uh, I kind of like it. It's it's different. Uh, gives the gun a mm-hmm. different look and uh, um, pretty good product overall. Well, good. I, look, I appreciate I appreciate the report on it. Uh, that's the uh, the HK VP9. Uh, there, you know, another polymer gun. It's pretty sweet out there. Uh, by the way, I want to give a range report. I was able to at the NRA meetings. Went to a media event with Glock, and they had a shooting the Glock 43. That's their new little, uh, and I do mean little single stack nine. I actually have the Glock 42. That's their 380. Kind of nice. I wasn't sure when I went out and shot it. I liked it. I said, okay, well, I'll get one of those. It's definitely bigger than the Ruger LCP or the kel It's another step up. You can put it in a pocket, but it's not going to go in as many pockets as the uh, as the LCP. The 43 is another slight bump up in size. Not a lot, but enough. Um... I don't know. I after shooting the the, L, the Glock forty three. It's a nine millimeter single stack, six rounds. I guess I came away thinking, okay, this one is, has more competition. There are a lot of small nines out there, and it's got to compete against the the cars, the the Shield, the Springfield uh, XDS, and some others like that. I think it's going to have a hard time competing there. And, and look, they're going to be Glock folks that just, because it's a Glock, they're going to buy it. That's fine. Um, I, I just, 
it, it didn't do it for me. I didn't think the grip angle was as good as I wanted it to be. But then again, other people were liking it. And that's, hey, that's why we make different guns. That's why we have different uh, options out there, which is awfully nice. So, I mean, there you go. Let's talk to Tim for just a second on line two out of uh, Virginia. Hey, Tim, you're up. Hey, Tom, out of uh, Charleston, West Virginia. We separated a long ah. time ago there. Hey, there uh, you go. Real fast, uh, big Glock fan. Uh, I, too, can't wait to get uh, my hands on the 43. Uh, as a SIG 938 owner and other Glock owners, I'm anxious to see how it shoots uh, as well as your last uh, caller said and as well you said. Okay. But uh, back, back uh, real fast, uh, two callers previous, uh, we was talking about the Oklahoma City bombing. You know, as gun rights uh, are constantly being eroded, uh, that does not mean we have to erode the rights of others, obviously, through terroristic acts. Um, as gun right, uh, as gun owners, we need to hold ourselves to a little bit higher standards. Um, and, and I don't think anyone condones that. Uh, you know, respectfully, that guy was out there. He's a conspiracy theorist. And uh, I think multitude of people that are on your uh, on your talk show or that call in we don't believe that way, and I just want to put that out there. And I don't believe you believe that way, Tom. I listen to you constantly. Matter of fact, a lot of times I try to leave work early so I can get at least three quarters of your show in because I enjoy listening to it so much. Um, well, thank you. You know, I, you're right. I don't agree with Rich. Uh, I, I think calling Tim McVeigh a patriot is such a horrendous twisting of the word. I mean, we patriots. Don't indiscriminately kill a bunch of people to what? Make a statement? You don't You don't blow up a building that has a daycare center in it. You don't blow up a building that has people who are absolutely not involved in this. They're, these were not warriors. These were just government workers. These are office workers. These are mothers and fathers and children who this maniac, this crazy person killed. And no, it offends me to my core to hear somebody say Tim McVeigh was a patriot. You got a problem with your government? Fine. There are a thousand ways to interact with your government that are legal and can be effective. Okay? But, yeah, and moral. Thanks a lot. It is immoral. It is unconscionable. It is horrendous. It is maniacal. It's every, it is terroristic. Come on, give me a break. This is not what we do. We're the good guys and gals. We're the ones who... Or act responsibly. We interact with our government. We change our government the way it's supposed to be changed, not that way. 866 Talk Gun. Covering all aspects of gun ownership every week on this fine radio station, you're listening to Gun Talk with Tom Gresham. You may have heard some of the news about what the Veterans Administration has been doing relative to our uh, our veterans and actually stripping them of their gun rights. And somebody finally is doing something about that. We're joined right now by Iowa Republican Senator Chuck Grassley. Senator, thank you so much for joining us. Well, I'm glad to talk to you. And, you know, we're talking about the Second Amendment. We're talking about veterans that have handled guns, uh, veterans who have uh, defended us from the terrible things of jihad terrorism and all that sort of thing. And now we're trying to take away their constitutional rights. Well, what is going on? Because I've heard stories about if uh, a veteran says, well, you know, I'm having a little trouble with my finances. I'm not sure I can handle those. Could could you help me out with that? All of a sudden their file gets marked as being somehow mentally incompetent. And then what, the VA is sending that information to the FBI and the ATF? Yeah, you know, I think it's quite appropriate If somebody has a real mental disorder and would be violent and could be of harm to others, we want to know that, and we want that in the FBI files, Mm -hmm. because you shouldn't be selling a gun to a person like that. We found out that in the school uh, slaughters that we've had in recent years. Five out of six of those people, I think, had real mental problems. But in the case of something you described, and I think you've described it right, that one way you get your name turned over to the FBI is simply to be uh, somewhat incompetent because somebody else is handling your finances. And uh, it's hard for me to believe this figure, but they say that 99 and three-tenths percent of the names that are 
coming from the VA in the uh, files of the of the FBI or that type of uh, of person. And uh, so uh, you can see then you go to buy a gun. Uh, you, the only thing that's wrong with you is somebody else is handling your finances. Got nothing to do with your mental capabilities of being dangerous to anybody else. You can't get a gun because the gun dealer has to check with the FBI. Your name's on the FBI list, so you don't get a gun. And so your constitutional rights are being violated. And so uh, we're trying to get a handle on this through our letter by finding out exactly what we think uh, is, is the case and then make some determination of what to do after that. But for sure, uh, one solution I have that I wasn't successful in getting accomplished, not because of this part of it, but part of an amendment I was offering on gun legislation a year or so ago, maybe now two years ago, um, it uh, it said that nobody should have his name uh, put into the uh, file unless there was a judicial determination that he was a threat to himself or a threat to somebody else. Let me ask you, if, if it's 99%, that smacks to me as a policy that somebody has had handed down from on high. And you've sent a letter to Eric Holder. What do you expect to get back? What are you hoping to find out here? We're trying to get the facts and where the idea comes from, trying to get to a point where there's a process for people that are illegitimately put into this file so they can't get a gun, that they can find out if their uh, name is on the list, if it's on the list, then why is it there and a process to get them off the list if they're mentally competent? That, that's the other thing is if somebody's on the list right now, how do they find out? How do they know what happened, how they got put on the list, and then what's the uh, appeals process to get them off? It's not very easy to get off, and uh, there's all kinds of foot dragging, and uh, your constitutional rights are being violated in the meantime. And that's why my amendment, before your name ever gets on the list, there ought to be some sort of judicial authority that said you're a harm to somebody else or you're a harm to yourself and you shouldn't have a gun, but only under those circumstances. In the VA's case, they actually allow hearsay to be used in determining whether you're competent or not. It's easier to get your name on the list than even what you read, because uh, if you have somebody else handle your finances, you fall into that co- category of assuming you'd be mentally incompetent, and so your name's on the list. Well, where do we go from here? You sent this letter to Attorney General Eric Holder. Uh, you're waiting for a response, or you're going to go ahead and introduce a bill on this? I've got a legislative solution that I've already told you about. It's going to be easy to uh, get that uh, reintroduced or brought up sometime on the floor of the House uh, and Senate. But right now, we won't probably do anything until we get an answer from Eric Holder. Well, as we know, he can be a little bit slow in responding. Of course, he's got one foot out the door as it is. Yeah, you're right. It's one thing to be dealing just generally with people that are incompetent uh, mentally and maybe can't have a gun, or even if it's questionable whether they're incompetent. Let's just say anybody from the general public. But when you're dealing with people that have joined the military uh, to defend this country and all the patriotism that's behind them and the, uh, and the overwhelming statistics that we have about the large number of people that have their names in this FBI list uh, through the VA, I think it's pinpointed enough to be an overstretch and we ought to be able to get it stopped one way or the other, either through uh, pressure on the Justice Department or, if necessary, through legislation. But now let me say something. Even if my legislation would pass, you've still got a hundred and some thousand people on that list that have to have a process uh, for getting off. So how do we do that? Well, that, that may take legislation, but it may also be something that Eric Holder can do on his own. And I don't have an answer to that right now. And uh, but we, but it'll be easy to get an answer. But first, I want to wait till I hear from the the Department of Justice. Sure, makes sense, Senator. Will you keep us posted? We'll we'll check in with you and follow the progress. Because you know, to me, this is actually a form of abuse of our veterans. Well, you're saying it in five or six words. What it took me a couple paragraphs to say, <laughs> but uh, but you're absolutely right. And we're talking about constitutional rights. People tend to think that the Second Amendment. Is uh, is 
second to something else. It's uh, just as sacred as freedom of speech, freedom of press, freedom of religion. And we've got to make sure that we treat it the same way. And this is a cavalier attitude uh, that the uh, VA has towards the rights of veterans to own guns. Absolutely. Senator, thank you so much for your help today. And uh, we'll be checking back with you as this thing moves forward. Senator Chuck Grassley from Iowa. All right, don't go far. We'll be right back. Everyone knows that dry fire practice can make you a better shooter. Make it count with the Score Time Laser Trainer Target from Laser Light. Use your own gun with Laser Light Laser or the Laser Light Trigger Time Laser Pistol to get great practice and have fun doing it. It's like an electronic dartboard target for your gun with scoring, timer, and shot display. To see more, go to laserlight.com. That's laser, L Y T E dot com. Attacks happen every day. How will you react? See real people put into real life criminal attack situations on First Person Defender. Discover what works and what doesn't. Kidnapping, ATM robbery, home invasion, and other attacks. Learn how to save your life and the lives of your family. Get the entire first season on DVD at ShopGunTalk.com. Get prepared. ShopGunTalk.com. Crossbreed Holsters is broadening our product selection to serve more of your concealed carry needs. With products handmade in the USA, like the bedside backup, gun belts, and of course our world-famous Super Tuck and Mini Tuck holsters, we understand what works, and we take pride in providing you with a quality product. At Crossbreed Holsters, we live and breathe concealed carry. We make and sell products that we believe in and products that our customers love. To see more, go to CrossbreedHolsters.com. That's CrossbreedHolsters.com. You bet your life on your defense ammo. Get the proven performance of Nosler bullets in the new Nosler Defense Ammunition. Featuring the same technology as the famous Acubon line. Polymer tip or hollow point. Bonnet performance handgun bullets for weight retention and barrier penetration. Available only in Nosler Defense Ammunition in 9mm, 40, and 45 caliber. Also available in 223 with a 64 grain bullet. Visit Nosler.com. All right, back with you, 866-TALK-GUN, or you can uh, send me an email, tom at guntalk.com. Of course, we have uh, Twitter running right now, if you'd like to join us over there. I'm at GunTalk on Twitter. Lots of news stories being posted over there, so if you want to stay informed, that's a, a, an awfully good way to do it. By the way, got a, a great email from a friend of mine. He just recently went through some simulation training. He's, of course, he starts off says, boy, that stuff stings. Yes, it does. <laughs> that's kind of the point. Uh, as we call it, the, the pain penalty. When you screw up, you get shot with some munitions, it hurts. But he went through a number of different scenarios. And you could tell in reading this, he was getting that whole, and we talk about this all the time, the you don't know what you don't know. He knew enough to say, okay, I haven't done this before. I need to get this training. But when he came out, I'll guarantee you he was thinking pretty much constantly for the next week or two about all the different scenarios. One that he described that was interesting, and the rules of engagement of this scenario was you have to engage. You can't just run away for the purposes of the training. One person is beating on another one with a baseball bat. So he engages, gets the person with a baseball bat to back off, stops, gets him stopped and everything. He takes his eyes off of the victim. The victim pulls a gun and shoots him in the scenario using some munitions. You think, well, that's just crazy. Who would set that up? Happens all the time. Ask any police officer about domestic violence calls. You separate them. You pull the guy off because he's beaten up the wife. And there have been, I mean, I know of cops who have been shot by the wife. You're going to take my man away. Yeah, he's the guy that was just beating on you and wailing on you. And she'll pull out a knife or pull out a gun or whatever. So once again, you don't know who's who in these deals. That's why... I always say don't get involved. If it's not your deal, don't get involved. There's a very good chance that you don't know who's who. You don't know who's doing what to whom. The person you see with a baseball bat may be the one that was just jumped by the other person. 
in Todd. I never thought of that. Yeah, that's why we take training, because we work with people who have thought of that. Now, you heard me say over and over and over and over again, when Barack Obama was running for president, people said, well, he can't do anything. He has to get laws passed through Congress. And I kept saying, he can do a lot. Here's another one he's doing. Of course, he has thwarted gun rights at every turn. He still says he wants to push for gun control. He still says that in his last 18 months, he wants to ban guns. He has a whole list of guns he wants to ban. And now we find that the Customs and Border Patrol, State Department, other agencies are blocking people from being able to travel with their firearms, i.e. hunters, putting rules in, say, we have to register with the Internal Revenue Service. There's a procedure for that. And so ICE and Customs and Border Patrol are working on this. Now, the NRA is on this. The Safari Club is on this. But it's just another example of what can be done at the bureaucratic level by unelected bureaucrats in these agencies to make it harder and harder to squeeze you, to turn the screws, to make it less convenient, less enjoyable to be a a shooter, a hunter. So you finally, a lot of people just say, I'm just not going to do this anymore. I'm not going to put up with it. I'm not going to get to the airport four hours ahead of time, which is what they're telling you you have to do. I'm not going to go onto the website with the IRS and register as a commercial entity so that I can transport or transfer. Actually, they're saying you're importing guns or exporting guns. You're exporting when you take them out. You're importing when you come in. You have to have all the, the forms necessary for export and import. That's nuts. You're going on a hunt in another country. That's nuts. But it's not nuts if the goal is to make people stop hunting, stop traveling with guns, stop owning guns, which is what the goal is, of course, of this administration and of certainly of a Hillary Clinton administration. Hillary would be much, much more anti-gun than Barack Obama. I mean, give me a break. It was the Clinton gun ban, remember, 1994? The so-called assault weapons ban? She was firmly behind that. Maybe more behind it than Bill was. Man, lots of stuff. Lots and lots of stuff. Oh, here's one. Good news. Uh, organizers of a music festival in Norman, Oklahoma, wanted to ban guns at its upcom- upcoming music festival, as it has in past festivals. The Oklahoma Second Amendment Association went to court over it, and the judge sided with them. Guns will now be allowed, but the banners are planning an appeal of the court's decision. Now, that's a true squad in action. That's getting out there. That's uh, it's doing what you got to do. Let's uh, go line one. Let's talk to Henry in Sun Valley, California. Hello, Henry. You're on Gun Talk. Uh, hey, Tom. Um, I uh, got to thank you for teaching me about the Dunning Kruger effect real quick. I, I just uh, totally that, remember that from a pa- couple past shows. Um, wasn't that I, interesting? Now, here's the weird yeah, that part. Was very I, had so, I had somebody last week mention the Dunning-Kruger effect to me. I had never heard of it before, and I talk about it on the air, and this guy did not hear it on the air. He says, well, you know about the Dunning-Kruger effect. It was kind of like, in all my life, I never heard of this, and now in the course of a week, I've heard about it twice. That was crazy. Well, I'm a pretty unskilled individual, so I know to come to you. Tom. So um, <laughs> I just got a Henry Big Boy 357, and this is my Sweet. first lever action that I've ever gotten. So I'm hoping okay. um, that you can just give me some one on one tips possibly about that. You bet. Uh, you got the 357 Magnum? Uh huh. Okay. First of all, probably shoot 38s in it a lot. Work on dry firing this gun and work on working the action with the gun on your shoulder because people will want to kind of take it down off the shoulder to work the lever action. The whole thing is that you want to work the action with the gun on your shoulder. That make, And it's kind of, if you can do it, work on having almost a flip of the wrist of, uh, and it makes it very fast and you can stay on target and that's what makes it fun to shoot. But no, you've got a delightful rifle. The The Henry Big Boy is a great series of guns and the three fifty seven. Is terrific because you can shoot the 38 specials in it. And then if you want to take it hunting or something, you can put 357 Magnum in it, same rifle. But yeah, work on dry fire, shooting it from the shoulder, and then when you get out the range, same deal. Shoot it from the shoulder. Don't take it off the shoulder while you're working the action, and you'll get it figured out pretty quickly, the, the motion and how to hold it, how to keep it from sliding off of your shoulder. But mainly just go out and have fun. Take people with you because everybody's going to want to shoot that. 866-TALK-GUN. Why 
is it that when you go buy a gun from a gun store and you fill out the 4473 form, it asks you your race? You ever think about that? Why do they care? It's not a, a criteria that has anything to do with whether or not you can own a gun. Why do you have to fill out something that says you're either Hispanic or non-Hispanic? And then right next to it is another box that actually asks your race. Two boxes for that. Bizarre. Well, a couple of uh, legislators, Congress people, have introduced a bill to require ATF to take that off. I said, come on. In fact, uh, Congressman Ted Post says, forcing citizens who are lawfully purchasing guns to disclose race and ethnicity with the threat of federal prosecution if they fail to disclose is completely unnecessary. Bottom line, if a law-abiding citizen is lawfully purchasing firearms, race and ethnicity are irrelevant. It is time to stop punishing those who are following the law. Thank you, sir. I appreciate that. Arthur, line three, Anchorage, Alaska. You're up, Arthur. What's up? Well, uh, on this whole idea of how we come up with these various regulations, um, mm-hmm. if you go ahead and try to make a law, and you want, especially if you're going to make it a felony, there's going to be a lot of discussion involved. There's uh, all sorts of hearings that take place and what have you. But with the Internal Revenue Service, basically, you screw with them, it's a felony. End of story. So it's really easy to just go ahead and come up with a new regulation with the Internal Revenue Service. You bypass a lot of garbage, and it's an instant felony. That's part of the reason why they run you know, our Class 3 tax stamp. And uh, it is a tax ah, stamp. Because it's a tax stamp, because instant that makes felony. it a federal felony. Not just a felony, but a federal felony. Yeah. And, of course, then we tack on, oh, it's, it's involving a firearm, so therefore it's even worse because a firearm felony is worse than any other felony somehow. <laughs> very, very interesting idea, because you're right. You know, usually if you pass a law, there's discussion about uh, the legislation. But when you have just an agency that adopts a rule, which is what the IRS does, they just somebody writes it, it appears you don't even know about it, the rule has the force of law, and in this case, the force of law can put you in prison, and it was never discussed, it was never voted on by elected officials, it just became a felony offense, and here you go. So, Arthur, I, I would, and I, it's a good point, thank you, sir, I appreciate that. Here's the thing, and I know there are people who say, yeah, wow, it's amazing how that happened, what, you know, gee. Look, the people who do this, the statists... The, the people who would want to put gun control under the IRS, who are doing that right now, they're not dumb. They may be a lot of things, but they're not stupid. And if they're doing this, it's with a clear goal in mind. And Arthur may be right. Because if what you face for a paperwork violation is a slap on the wrist, big deal. Okay, you know. But if what you face is a felony charge... You may choose to not participate in the activity at all rather than risk inadvertently exposing yourself to a felony charge. And so if you say, well, you know, I kind of like to shoot guns and it's fun, but it's not worth the risk of a felony charge. If I screw up, if I transpose two numbers on a form, People have been actually stopped from buying guns. You could actually, could, you could, dealers, firearms dealers have been basically written up and cited by the ATF because somebody transposed two numbers on a form. At a certain point, people may say, wow, if this is going to be a felony, I don't think I want to participate in this. The people doing this are not stupid. They understand the chilling effect. They, they also play the long game. They don't need to get everybody to stop now, but if they could get 2% a year to stop, you do the math. How long would it take before it's an insignificant part of the population that owns guns that would be insignificant when it comes to voting? There may be a method to their madness. <laughs> 